so dramatic, such an entrance. So great to have you here, ready to light a fire up in your dancing. This is Vaughn, welcome to Boro Mastery. Wonderful to have you here. I've got the scarf, I've got the turtleneck, slick hair. I am ready to teach and ready to rock with you. How you been? Hope you're dancing up a storm. I wanna share with you an amazing lesson today, and that is why passion is for amateurs. And all you hear about is everyone being like, you gotta be passionate, right? You gotta be passionate, follow your passion. Do what you love. No, terrible advice. I mean, listen, yes, follow what you love to do and what your heart should do, but you're gonna find as I go through this, you're gonna to relate to the gap between what you're passionate about and why passion isn't enough to keep you going. And I want you to think for a minute. You've probably felt this in your own life. You started dancing and then it's like, after a while, it's like, this shit's really hard. <laughs> Dancing's actually really difficult, oh my God. So it's like the first couple of weeks of lessons, it's like, this is great, the momentum's there. You turn up, you're present, you're like, this is amazing. You buy a book, maybe even get some shoes, like sometime down the track, you keep turning up, this is great. And then it tips over the bell curve and it starts to become a chore. Maybe it becomes a little bit harder than you thought or your results stagnate, right? That's part of the learning curve. So essentially when you first begin something, you have exponential growth when you first start hooking into any activity. You really start to dial in and go, this is amazing. You eat, sleep and breathe it. And you go, this is, oh, I love this so much. Exponential growth happens and then it tapers off and it tapers off pretty quickly. So after it tapers off, you've got to then uh, find the new way to hit the growth curve again. Now it may not be the same, it'll be more work for less growth. That's what happens over the continuum of time. This is why if you're a professional in anything, you have such a broad base of knowledge in what you do. So for you to get the next level of growth, it's so much work. And then the, the level isn't that much higher. But the shift you make is everything. You might, you might shift your, let's say as a percentage, what you do by 2% and you become so much better from that 2%. Okay, so, so in the beginning though, you've got all of this energy and momentum. This is amazing. So you could call that passion. Now here's the thing about passion. The root word, what's called the etymology of the word passion, comes from the Latin word passio, which means uh, suffering. Suffering. So it's like when somebody says to you, you need to be more passionate, it's like basically you need to nail yourself to the cross and to be willing to suffer for what you do. Not the modern vernacular of being like, you need to be in love with what you do. I think that's what people confuse. Like, you need to be more passionate about what you do, meaning enthusiasm, which means from with spirit, right? Like from within, enthusios. It's the spirit within that gives you that positive energy, right? Passion is suffering. So it's so true in dancing, like you've got to suffer for what you do. That makes sense. It's like, yes, I need to be passionate about dancing. I need to suffer for my art. I need to put everything into it. And I need to like make it big or go home. But what I like to say is passion is for amateurs. Passion gets you in the studio. Passion gets you going. You need something more than that to keep you in the game long term. Because as we found, as all professionals have found, passion burns out. It's like sugar. If you eat a lot of sugar in your diet, sugar is the fastest burning fuel. If you equate your body to a vehicle, it's a fuel and it burns up real quick. So sugar is a terrible way to get energy. So it's like hitting a snake or like a snack food or a Kit Kat or a chocolate bar to get energy to dance is a terrible idea because it burns out real fast. So another fat source, sorry, another fuel source is fat, right? So fat is like a slow burning kerosene lamp, but it's still a fuel. Now that fuel I would equate to giving you longer distance energy is purpose. If you connect dancing to a purpose like and I've found lots of clients come in and the purpose for them is they, um, they, 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 well, you know, I can't make any statements that are too bold, but a lot of them get rid of the depression or anxiety, right? Like they connect to a deeper purpose within themselves. Have you felt that? Have you ever felt like dancing sort of alleviates something that maybe you didn't know was a problem and then all of a sudden it's like, man, I feel better about myself, I feel happier. In fact, I asked someone today about their dancing and said, what's it done for you? And it's okay if it hasn't done anything. But coming back into it, has your life felt better as a result? Because she'd been off for a number of years, only started about two months ago. And she goes, you know what? Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm happier, but I have more energy in life. You know, I, I'm, I'm turning up and I'm, I'm in my life more present. I'm like, 
That's what dancing does. You know, it gives you a higher purpose. So passion to begin, purpose to maintain. But if you want to know a secret, super awesome ninja sauce on top of all of this, what really us pros, like the ones that really, you know, the top guys I've studied, the top successful people, a magnificent obsession to keep going. Think about this. This doesn't mean like the stalkery thing where you're waiting out some, some dude's window like, ha <laughs> Is he home? Is she home? No, don't be a weirdo. Don't go stalk people. I'm talking about the type of obsession where it's like you love doing what you're doing to the point it just becomes part of your fabric, your DNA, who you are, right? Like you're like, this is amazing, and you could not imagine it any other way. I've often referenced, referenced this as an ideal, you know, an idea that you're in love with. And so I found when you move from having passion, right? Like so you, you've got maybe an enthusiasm to dance, You've got the passion side of it, like you're willing to suffer for what you do. But then you go, you know what? There's a higher purpose to why I'm dancing. And as weird as that can sound, it's true. It's like dancing makes me feel more fulfilled as a person because I turn up and I accomplish something. It makes me feel like I'm more present in my life because, you know, this is my time. It's self-care. I get to look after me, right? No mummy guilt. I'm dancing for me right now. And then if you move into having a magnificent obsession, like it becomes part of who you are, like, I mean, dancing's an identity, so it's not really who you are. It's like, it's a part of who you, what you are and who you become, I suppose. But you tap into it in a, in a level that's more than a hobby, right? Like it becomes more than that. It's something that you couldn't imagine your life not having. And I think when you have something like that, it f changes the foundation of your life. Like you have more meaning in what you do. You, you'll turn up in life more presently elsewhere. You'll be like, because I dance, I feel amazing out there. Like around the people, I have more confidence. You know, I feel more collected. And, you know, it's a sense of achievement because I turn up and I do these medals, I do these competitions, and it scares the shit out of me, but I love doing it. You know, what a life that would be. And I've got to tell you, I don't think there's many things that you can do that have this passion. You know, you can be a, a equestrian horse rider. And you get that connection with your horse, right? Like I've heard of that from people that I've taught who, who are high level, um, you know, question writers, and I'm talking like really high level. They say they get this sort of connection there. And it's the same thing. They go through these phases of passion to start, purpose to maintain, and then an obsession to keep going. You know, you've got to be in that sort of level. But if dancing, if you're watching this, dancing resonates with you, right? It's one of those things where there's, there's something that draws you in. And, and, but if you've hit a flat spot in your dancing or you've hit a flat spot because you've been turning up for years, you've got to find a new way to rekindle that excitement. And so, you know, in my life, I started off like you did. I was turning up to classes. I was there to meet girls and that was it. I didn't even know you could compete in dancing. And then I moved from that to doing a lesson and I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. Doing one lesson turned into two lessons. That turned into three to four to five lessons a week. Started dancing every day. Started watching YouTube in my lunch breaks, right? Started attending every comp. I did 20, 30 comps a year. Then I started going overseas and going to camps. And like, it just became my life and what I love doing. But I, that's not something that was sustainable, right? Eventually, I needed to change the way I was doing things. After years or over a decade of competing at a high level, I was like, you know, I wanted to move into something different. So teaching then became that thing running a studio, doing over 700 medals, right? With my students and Alison was doing that as well. We were teaching our students now, imparting the knowledge. Then we had to change it. So, you know, we still do medals, but I was like, what else can we do? Insert boring mastery, insert creating things like DSI TV, like trying to shift ways of doing things to keep that spark going. Because I can tell you something, if you get your dream, you really get the thing you want in life, it can turn into a job. It can turn into a chore, something you resent doing because by doing it the same way all the time, it becomes normalized. And when it becomes normalized, you, you can take it for granted. You know, like I'm not perfect. Of course, I've taken it for granted sometimes. But I always keep it in check by thinking, you know what? Like you've got to find a way to keep that obsession going. You've got to find a way to keep that purpose-driven movement. Because if it lacks purpose, you must quit. If, it's, if, it's, if, you, if I'm only doing it for just a hobby it's like to me it's personally it's not that worth it after a while you've got to find a way to move it towards something that you enjoy on a deep level okay so please hear me i'm not saying to quit if you're a hobby dancer what i'm saying is that you have to find a way to connect to it on a deep level because after a while you level out and you plateau right and it stops becoming this enjoyable thing as much because the pursuit is gone and i think when we lose our pursuit in life 
when we lose chasing after something, it starts to slowly kill us. It's like life is for growth or decay, right? That's sort of the law of life. We're either moving forward or we're dying slowly as we go backward. And the only time it's good to go backwards is in cha-cha, right? <laughs> so that's the only time you're allowed to go backwards. You're going to take one step back to go forward. That's good. <laughs> in life, it's like, oh, I don't want to go back that much. Point is, reignite why you do what you do. Like, find a different avenue. If you're bored with the monotony of what you're doing, tune into these more often. Check out what I do on YouTube. Like, hook into the materials I put up online. Um, go to your coach and say, challenge me in a different way. Let's go do a comp. Let's go do something over here. Let's do a random charity performance. Let's do something that scares me and moves me in a different direction. Because when that happens, I guarantee the quality of your life is going to go up. When that happens, you'll find more meaning and fulfillment. I want to thank you for tuning in today. This is Vaughn. Give me a like and share below. Let me know any questions you have so I can address them and talk about them on the next episode. And remember, you're only one step away from mastering, mastering the art of ballroom dancing. So make sure you check out ballroommastery.com. And I'll see you in the next video.